It was a big week for economic development in our region as dozens of new jobs will soon be available. A former Eastern Kentucky mayor is indicted and a man is arrested for setting several fires in Floyd County. And it all happened this week. Welcome everyone to This Week. For the next half hour, we'll catch you up on the news you may have missed and give you updates on the week that was in your hometown. A pair of announcements Thursday will bring nearly 200 jobs into Pike County. The first of those announcements will bring business to the Kentucky Enterprise Industrial Park. I spoke with a city official about the announcement and what it means to our region. The efforts of local and state officials to diversify the struggling economy and attract jobs into the region through Pikeville's Kentucky Enterprise Industrial Park came to fruition today as the announcement was made that the agriculture startup company, App Harvest, has plans to build a 2 million square foot, $50 million high-tech greenhouse at the park, creating 140 full-time jobs. Officials say the arrival of App Harvest is important to attracting additional companies into Enterprise Industrial Park. It shows that we're not we're a player, and uh, as far as Central Appalachia goes, uh, you know, Enterprise Park is the the premier industrial park. It's uh, it has everything. It has the infrastructure there. It has power. It has water. It has sewer. Uh, has a road. It has a bridge. Uh, so everything's there. Now it has a couple of tenants. Um, you, you know, and so it, it it shows others that there are there are uh, people who are willing to make that large investment here in Pikeville and uh, and it will attract others here. So once the ball begins to start rolling, it's gonna roll very, very quickly, we hope. At App Harvest, our mission is to bring Appalachia into the next generation of agriculture and employ the hardworking men and women in the region. We will develop large scale, high tech greenhouses, growing fresh vegetables for local communities in the US. The average U.S. meal travels 1,500 miles by the time it reaches your plate, and in many cases, is imported from other countries. App Harvest will be able to deliver our fresh produce to the northeast, southeast, and midwest of the U.S. within a day's drive. Appalachia, we're coming home. Reporting from Pikeville for EKB News, I'm Sean Allen. In other news, also involving a greenhouse, business leaders and government officials were in Brushy Thursday, hoping to soon see black turn into green. That's where a groundbreaking was held for a new industrial hemp greenhouse at the site of an old coal mine. EKB News reporter Shannon Deskins has the details. This morning, a groundbreaking was held in Pike County for what will soon be a new hemp growing operation. Those in support of the project gathered to hear more about Patriot Bioenergy Corporation's multi-million dollar plan. On the initial build out will be about a five million dollar investment in the greenhouses. We'll have 120,000 square feet of greenhouse space hopefully by the end of the end of the summer. So, but that enables us to grow year round. Over the next 24 months, Ford says the investment will total 15 million dollars and create as many as 50 jobs. And Patriot Bioenergy officials say the plan is to keep the project focused on helping the eastern Kentucky economy. Local investment, local hiring, and, uh, and, and use local contractors on our, on our construction. So, so hopefully it uh, kind of circulates some money within the local economy. Senator Ray Jones is pleased with the support the project is receiving and says this is an opportunity to create agricultural jobs in a region that previously relied heavily on coal mining. And if you look around, you've got the county attorney who's here supporting it. You've got the Pike County Sheriff, several members of the Sheriff's Department who are here supporting it. And I think it's something the community can rally around because of the importance of creating jobs and expanding our, our uh, agriculture base. Ford says he hopes to begin construction on the greenhouses by mid-March and plant the first hemp seeds by the end of April. Reporting from Brushy in Pike County. For EKB News, I'm Shannon Deskins. 
The once popular former mayor of Prestonsburg is back in the spotlight, this time as a defendant in a federal criminal action. 60-year-old Jerry Fannin often made headlines while in office. In 2007, he was recognized for saving a drowning victim at Dewey Lake, and years later, he occasionally played semi-pro football. In 2014, he was defeated in re-election bid by former city councilman and state trooper Les Stapleton. A year later, a state audit of the city accused Fannin of misusing over $100 thousand dollars in city funds. Fannin is accused of theft from the city he once led for the benefits of the football team on which he played. Fannin was indicted in U.S. District Court Friday on a single count of theft from an agency receiving federal funds. The charge comes at a time when Fannin has been in declining health for over a year, a situation his former attorney says leaves him unable to respond to the allegations. Jerry recently had two severe strokes and had some physical and cognitive issues from those strokes and is currently undergoing therapy. Uh, right now he's really not in a position that he can assist an attorney or anyone else in dealing with the allegations uh, uh, and hopefully when and if he's able to do so that he would defend and deny these charges. Uh, what we're in the process of doing is providing the medical documentation to the uh, U.S. Attorney's Office so that they will know what his condition is. The indictment accuses Fannin of diverting city money and property to the East Kentucky Drillers in 2013. The allegations include that Fannin gave money from the city to the team and he used city funds to rent cabins at Jenny Wiley State Resort Park to serve as housing for those players. He is also accused of ordering that two vans owned by the Prestonsburg Senior Citizen Center to transport the drillers to a game in Michigan driven by city employees. The total amount of money allegedly expended by the city for the drillers was $7,800. If convicted, Fannin could face a maximum sentence of 10 years in prison and be ordered to pay $250,000 in fines and restitution to the city. Well, coming up, despite the wet winter, forest fires became a big problem for officials in Floyd County, one man was even arrested for allegedly setting some of those fires. Details coming up, but first, EKB meteorologist Ross Whitley will be in with a look back at the week in weather. Stay tuned to This Week. Pikeville Medical Center's Vision Services now include an optometry clinic in partnership with the University of Pikeville, Kentucky College of Optometry, PMC provides diagnosis and treatment of eye conditions for the whole family. The optometry clinic is conveniently located on the ninth floor of the PMC clinic. Schedule an appointment today. Call 606-218-2209. Pikeville Medical Center, providing quality eye care to the region. This is what it feels like when you have more month than money. And this is what it feels like when you let Speedy Cash help. Hi, this is Linda Kynes at Speedy Cash. We know better than anyone that sometimes you just come up short on bills, supplies, or whatever the case may be. At Speedy Cash, we can help with specials for first-time customers, and all transactions are confidential, and all checks are held for 30 days. Call me today for a location near you. If you need cash fast, it's Speedy Cash! From where it happens, when it happens, EKB TV news reporters are on the scene with live local coverage powered by the 4G LTE network of Appalachian Wireless. You get our live on location reports by way of the newest technology available. We've got you covered at EKB TV. From Johnson and Lawrence counties in Kentucky to Buchanan and Dickinson counties in Virginia, from Perry County, Kentucky to Mingo County, West Virginia. Whether the news is in Pikeville, Paintsville, Grundy, or Clintwood, we're there for you with live local reports powered by the 4G LTE network of Appalachian Wireless. Welcome back to this week. Now we're going to look at the weather this past week. It has been an interesting week of abnormally warm temperatures. Starting off on Monday, we hit a high of 70 degrees. Plenty of sunshine out there on Monday. Tuesday, we got a little bit of rain late, but before that, we hit a record high of 75 degrees. And then on Wednesday, clouds and rain, some drizzle out there, kept temperatures down. 
We only got up to 61. Still warm for this time of year. Thursday, plenty of sunshine and temperatures rose once again to 71 degrees. And for Friday, we hit a record high of 79 degrees, tying an all time record high for the month of February. Now you might wonder why we were in this situation. It's because we had a series of low pressure systems off to our west that kept going north and pulling up warm air from the south. So even while we got some rain and a cold front to move through the area, temperatures stayed warm. Now that the final cold front has gone through, we're back down to some cooler temperatures. But this week we definitely hit some records. Tuesday 75 breaking the old record of 72 set back in 1997. Wednesday we didn't get there. Thursday we didn't get there. But Friday we just absolutely destroyed that old record of 71 and 82, 2000 and 2001. We hit a record high of 79 degrees. And that will do it for the weather this week. Thanks, John. A strong arm robbery led to a brief exchange of gunfire Tuesday afternoon at Betsy Lane. It happened at Zippy's Pizza and Subs, and the owners say it was former employees who were robbing them. Zippy's owners told EKB News that former employees, 20-year-old Devonna Wallen and 19-year-old Christian Lyons, both of Prestonsburg, pushed their way into the store, smashed the cash register, and left with an undisclosed sum of money. While leaving, shots were fired between the alleged robbers and the owner. The pair were later apprehended in Prestonsburg and lodged in the Floyd County Detention Center on charges of second-degree robbery and other drug charges. Lyons was being held on a $25,000 cash bond, which has now been reduced to a $10,000 cash bond, Wallen has since been released. As investigators from the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife began their investigation Wednesday morning into the series of fires in the community of David, they apprehended their suspect by the end of the day with the help of the community. I got the opportunity to speak with the alleged arsonist at the Floyd County Detention Center. An arrest has been made in connection to several forest fires being set in the community of David after the Middle Creek Fire Department offered a reward for tips leading to the conviction of a person or persons responsible for those fires and the community responded. We had actually uh, several witnesses that had witnessed the uh, vehicle leaving the scene shortly after the fire and uh, we followed up on that throughout the day. Uh, Later this afternoon, we went and interviewed uh, both uh, the subject and also uh, the person that had been riding with him. It was a red uh, car, and uh, when we got there, we did, uh, we did locate the vehicle in the driveway. Uh, the person that was riding with him uh, did give us a statement, basically telling us uh, what had happened, how the fires were set, and everything in that community. 36-year-old John Shepard of David says he never intended for the fires to get out of control. An arrest has been made in connection to several forest fires being set in the community of David after the Middle Creek Fire Department offered a reward for tips leading to the conviction of a person or persons responsible for those fires, and the community responded. We had actually uh, several witnesses that had witnessed the uh, vehicle leaving the scene shortly after the fire, and uh, we followed up on that throughout the day. Uh, later this afternoon, we went and interviewed uh, both uh, the subject and also uh, the person that had been riding with him. It was a red uh, car, and uh, when we got there, we did, uh, we did locate the vehicle in the driveway. Uh, the person that was riding with him uh, did give us a statement, basically telling us uh, what had happened, how the fires were set, and everything in that community. 36-year-old John Shepard of David says he never intended for the fires to get out of control. I recall on one of them that I had accidentally, you know, didn't mean to set it, but it took and got out of control on me and couldn't get it under control, so we let it go, you know. But never try to hurt nobody. It's very dangerous, the fires are, and... I just noticed that it's terrible, you know, for anybody. According to the arrest citation, a passenger in the car with Shepard stated he had set several fires in the area. Shepard was arrested and charged with two counts of willfully setting a fire and wanted endangerment and remains lodged in the Floyd County Detention Center.
Shepard remained lost on a $5,000 cash bond. Coming up, it was a busy week for our sports teams with district tournaments throughout the state. Who's heading to regional? Michaela Colley will be in next with sports on This Week. Pikeville Medical Center's emergency department has immediate openings for NPs, RNs, ED technicians, EMTs, and paramedics. PMC is a level two trauma center and is home to an $11.3 million state-of-the-art emergency department and the region's most advanced medical technology. PMC offers great pay and an excellent benefit package. Call 606-218-4908 or visit pikevillehospital.org to apply. It's about time, your time, waiting to connect, waiting for downloads, waiting to wait. It's about time to get high-speed broadband from Intermountain Cable. Get reliable speeds up to 100 megs with extreme Wi-Fi to power all your family's devices at the same time, all backed by 24-7 local service and support. Take your time back. Upgrade to extreme Internet. Call or click imctv.com today. In times of joy, in moments of grief, we are there. When the world looks for truth, broadcasters come through, even when all else fails. Today, with more ways than ever to experience the moments that transform our lives, Americans still choose broadcast television and radio more than all other media combined. Television and radio are still the most trusted sources for news and entertainment. And our web and social sites are among the most visited sites in our daily lives. When important moments happen, both big and small, we're the first informers to history. We are the pioneers, the innovators, the local broadcasters of radio and television, reaching more people, touching more lives. It was a week full of excitement all around the region as teams competed in their respective district tournaments. Some for the last time, others advanced to the championships, and now they move on to the upcoming 15th region tournament that tips off Monday evening. Taking a look back at these championship matchups, first we talk about the ladies of the 15th region. Heading to McGoffin County where the 57th district tournament took place, the second seed of Johnson Central Lady Eagles came out on top over the one seed Paintsville. 59 to 38 in the title game and now roles will be flipped. Johnson Central is now a number one seed and the Tigers a two seed heading into the 15th region tournament. To the DW Howard Fieldhouse for the final 58th district tournament that only features Floyd County schools. In the championship, it was South Floyd and Betsy Lane. The Raiders put on a show outscoring Betsy Lane by 24 points for their second ever district title in program history. And what a way to go out for the Lady Raiders. Final score was 51 to 27 as the Raiders pick up a number one seed in the upcoming tournament. From the 59th district, the Shelby Valley Lady Cats did it again and again, picking up their sixth consecutive 59th district title after defeating Pikeville on Thursday, 62 to 40. Earlier in the week, one seeded Belfry was upset by four seed Lawrence County as the Bulldogs advanced to the championship to meet up with Pike Central, where the Hawks took care of business in the 60th district championship, defeating Lawrence County 57 to 41. The girls side is narrowed down to eight teams and now it's time to check out the boys action from around the region. In the 57th district, the Johnson Central Golden Eagles made their seventh straight appearance in the title game and came out victorious over the McGoffin County Hornets 79-59 on Friday. For the final time tonight, South Floyd and Allen Central hit the hardwood for one last match between the two teams before their consolidation next season. The South Floyd Raiders and the Rebels battled it out, but the Raiders were crowned champions after defeating the Rebels 71-62, and now they can say they got the last one. From Pikeville High School, the 59th District Tournament was an action-packed game as the Shelby Valley Wildcats and the Pikeville Panthers suited up in the championship. It was back and forth all night long, but the Panthers made it to the line 40 times 
and those free baskets cost the Wildcats in the long run as head coach Elijah Justice and the Panthers pull out the win by a score of 60-52 to in the 59th District Championship over Shelby Valley. And wrapping up the district championships in the 60th District, Timmy Dalton and the Lawrence County Bulldogs picked up a big 71-53 victory over the Belfry Pirates. Region tournaments tip off Monday from the East Kentucky Expo Center, beginning with girls basketball action on Monday and Tuesday, with the boys following later in the week. I'm Michaela Colley, and all of us at EKB Sports look forward to seeing you all at the games. The Letcher Fiscal Court met again Friday to discuss how to deal with the county's projected million dollar budget shortfall. One suggestion for how to deal with the problem could put a major recreational destination in the county at risk. EKB News reporter Chris Anderson has the story. Another day, another meeting of the Letcher County Fiscal Court, the third this week, as the court continues to discuss how to deal with the projected $1.3 million dollar budget shortfall. Friday's meeting acted largely as a prelude to another meeting of the court scheduled for Monday. As suggested by county officials during Friday's meeting, the court will consider raising court costs to assist with maintenance on the county's courthouse, and they will again consider selling property, including the less than decade old Letcher County Recreational Center. Magistrate Terry Adams, who suggested the rec center be put up for sale, said the center is breaking the county's budget. If you put that on the agenda, you might as well put the rec center on the agenda. If you're going to sell property, you might as well sell it off. We can tell the rec center. I think that's the biggest cash drain. The rec center payments do not come out of the county budget. Yeah, they come out of code savings. From the, not only the payment to the upkeep and uh, maintenance and salaries and you know we just can't afford it right now. If we cannot get rid of some of our debt, namely the rec center, um, I believe substantial cuts will be coming. The sale of property was again acknowledged as only a temporary solution and Judge Executive Jim Ward said new revenue sources must be found or cuts will have to be made. Items carried over from previous meetings, including the consideration of an insurance premium tax, were also discussed, but several magistrates said they would not vote for the tax and are unlikely to change course on the matter. Ward said the court could consider a property tax increase, but the tax rate would have to increase to between 20 and 25 percent in order to plug the projected hole in the budget. With more budget discussions left to be had, Monday's court meeting is scheduled for 10 a.m. Reporting in Whitesburg for EKB News, I'm Chris Anderson. Straight ahead, a life-changing and life-saving law you may not know about. That's coming up on This Week. Pikeville Medical Center's Heart and Vascular Institute is a leader in heart care. Cardiovascular and thoracic surgeons Dr. Abdullah Atum and Dr. Dermot P. Halpin specialize in difficult heart and lung surgeries. They have performed more than 15,000 open heart procedures. Their office is located on the second floor of the PMC Clinic. For appointments, call 606-218-2202. Pikeville Medical Center, proud member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network. I knew I could get myself out of this. I just needed some hope and some help. I took the first step to recovery when I made the call. If you're depressed, drinking, and using drugs, you may need help. And the Affordable Care Act guarantees coverage of substance abuse. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment. I had problems just getting to sleep, drinking, and using pills every night. I feel like I'm losing control. I'm afraid I'll lose my job or even my family. Are you losing hope? You can recover and get back on track. Call now for hope and help with proven gentle recovery programs. I never thought that I could be somebody who didn't drink and use drugs. I have something to hold on to for strength. I'm in recovery, getting the help I need. Call the Addiction Hope and Helpline now for a free assessment with someone who cares. Call 800-876-6387, 800-876-6387. The belief system that someone has to reach rock bottom before seeking help with substance abuse is not the case for everyone. And I found out Monday when I spoke with a Floyd County woman and a mother who lost her son to an overdose. 
When someone has a drug problem, it's not a road that they walk alone. Oftentimes, there are those that care for that person that walk that road right alongside them, often feeling helpless along the way. But they're not helpless. There is something they can do. They can intervene through Casey's Law. Casey's Law is an involuntary treatment act that allows parents, relatives, and or friends to petition the court on behalf of someone who has a substance use disorder. It's called Casey's Law because our son Casey died of a heroin overdose at the age of 23. At that particular time we were told that there was nothing that we could do, that he had to want to, lose enough, and hit bottom. And while we were waiting for all those things to happen, Casey died. Charlotte went on to say that if Casey's Law keeps one family from going through what her family has gone through, it was all worth it. If it wasn't for Casey's Law, I, I know that I would have died. Casey's Law is not a cure. Casey's Law forced me to sit still, to learn about myself, to learn about my disease through the 90 days, um, and it gave me hope. Casey's Law not only profoundly affects the life of the person with the drug problem, but those closest to them as well. I have a home now, and I have my brother with me and my mom with me, and that is the biggest thing that's ever happened to me in my life. I have her now, and I can talk to her, and she can talk to me and know who she's talking to and know what she's talking about. It's completely different. We're taken care of. I mean, we're still, I mean, we don't live rich, but we live happy, and we live comfortably, and our tummies are always full, you know? It's just, it's incredible, the things that Casey Law has brought to us. For more information on Casey's Law, visit them on the web at caseyslaw.org. Reporting from Prestonsburg for EKB News, I'm Sean Allen. Coming up next, we'll fill you in on a few happenings in your area as we take a look at the week ahead. Stay with us. We'll be right back on This Week. Pikeville Medical Center celebrates February as American Heart Month. When it comes to treating heart disease, our Heart and Vascular Institute provides world-class care close to home. Your heart is in good hands with our experienced team of specialists. They treat a wide variety of heart conditions and perform difficult procedures using some of the most advanced cardiac equipment and technology available. To schedule an appointment, call 606-218-2201. Pikeville Medical Center. We're all heart. When you think of radio and TV, you think of your favorite shows and stations. They're local, folks in your neighborhood. Yeah, that's right, they're right there with you, reporting on your weather, driving on your streets and roads, experiencing what your community experiences. Sure, they provide national and world news, but the real message, the real voice, is in your community, reporting on events that are relevant and important to you. This is especially important when your cable or satellite service goes down in a storm. You may not have cable. You might not even have cell service. But your local broadcasters will be there with up-to-date warnings and alerts. They are literally your lifeline to all that matters to you. And your local broadcaster is not just news. They bring you sports, your sports, the games as they happen. Your local broadcaster is there on the radio, on TV, bringing all the excitement directly to you. Your community, your life, is all brought to you by your local broadcasters. Up to date, informed, and important, just for you. We are broadcasters, your broadcasters. The EKB TV crew is proud to be outfitted by Embroid Me in Coal Run. Here's a look at some events that you may be interested in this upcoming week. Community Conversations will be holding their next meeting Tuesday, the 28th, beginning at noon. The event will take place at the Sazon Mexican Restaurant in Williamson. The meeting focuses on implementing solutions to the problems facing Williamson, from drug addiction to workforce improvement needs. If you're a fan of bluegrass music, listen up. A Night of Bluegrass will be held Friday the 3rd at the Forum in Hazard beginning at 6.30. Performers include Mountain Melody, Middle Fork Grass, Mitchell Shepherd Band, and Sunrise Ridge. Tickets are $7 at the door. 
And the series of kayak fishing tournaments will kick off next weekend in Prestonsburg. The first will be Saturday, March 4th at Dewey Lake with several other events to follow throughout the spring. Time is tentatively set for 6 a.m. For more information, look them up on Facebook. I hope you enjoyed our look back at some of the stories that made headlines this week. Be sure to tune in next week at 6 p.m. right here on EKB TV. For this week, I'm Sean Allen. Have a great weekend.